Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name is Rodney Dupree and today we got a cool show for y'all. It's our fourth installment of our cooking class uh, with the Galvis Hardware and we got some really neat things for y'all. We're doing sauce patate, we're doing crawfish and angel hair pasta, cornbread several ways, collard greens, broccoli salad, and some screwdrivers. So y'all hang on, Cajun Living and Cooking's fixing to start right about now. Tight line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana. Trap line sitting on a pipeline waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens. That's how we live, and it sure feels fine. All right, Holly, here we are cooking again. I know. We got a really cool recipe this time. It's sauce patate and a little everybody don't know about it. It's, it's they call it uh, New Orleans potato stew but a sauce patate is the claim to fame for French settlement as a matter of fact uh, they are known as the sauce patate capital of the world um, so I'm gonna tell y'all a little bit about the recipe we use in one pound of smoked sausage and you can use any sausage because we have 10,000 kinds of good sausage around here and what you're going to do is start smothering down your sausage. One pound pack is fine for what we're doing. Now this is the quick recipe. Uh, the original start with the roux. This is the quick recipe and you're going to get a kick out of that as we get going. Mm -hmm. so, so this is an accelerated, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I guess it's the more of the fast style, you would mm -hmm. call it. Yeah. Um, so what you're doing is you've got your sausage browning and we cut it real thin in rounds and you're going to cook that down and when they're done we're going to leave just a little bit of oil in there for the onions bell pepper and this time we use red bell pepper mm -hmm. and celery onions bell pepper and celery and you can use any type of bell pepper but that's the kind we have right now but any bell pepper would be fine. It'll give it a little more sweet flavor. Yeah, but, uh, that's what I was going to say. And, and you can change that up, be it yellow, red, green. So she's going to start browning this down. And I want to take a moment to talk about the sponsors of our class with all our folks out there. Um, I'd like to talk about, number one, Capital City Produce. Look at some of the cool produce they got us this week. Uh, talk to Taff. And uh, they're going to be here next week, and we're going to do some cooking with them on something really cool. They got very good produce. DS Tire. Um, I don't know how much to say about them. We say a lot about them, but if you need something with your car, you go to DS Tire. They can help you from brakes to inspection stickers to anything on the car. Call over there. Talk to Ed. He's the guy at the desk. He'll fix you up. And I'm going to tell you, our third sponsor is Leader's Fried Chicken. Yeah. And if you haven't had good chicken, you go to Leader's Fried Chicken and um, you, you'll step on other people's fried chicken, as a matter of fact. Uh, real good family-owned business over there. They take care of the community and you couldn't ask for anything better over there. The coleslaw is good, too. I love the coleslaw. Awesome. And there you have our sponsors. So we're going back to the sauce patate. You're getting it brown pretty good in yeah, there. Just about good. to take that out. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take it out. And I tell you, there's hardly much grease in there at all on this one, um, on this type of sausage. Some do, some don't. So some sausage, you want to drain all of that out of there. And this one barely has anything at all. So we're going to be able to move on to part two of it, where we're adding all the goodies. Yeah. And y'all this is uh this goes way back to um i don't even know how long i i, I was looking up some of the history on the sauce patate and 
it goes all the way as far as I think into the 1700s where this really started cooking over there but I don't know when they were named capital of the world over there um, so tell you what she's pulling the sausage out we're gonna add the other ingredients in we're gonna see what's next all right Holly we got the sausage out already yes good and browned mm -hmm. and you've been cooking the onions the celery and the bell pepper for a while now and you're ready to dump the garlic into it right and they recommend a couple more minutes you you really don't want to brown your garlic you, you could overcook the garlic but be, if you'd have started with the onions you can overcook the garlic but at this point you really can't and what I want to talk about is like I was saying the original sauce patat starts with the roux but we're using Uncle Larry's stew and a few so this kind of uh, makes it quicker like when you get home from work or something and you want to get things going a little quicker than making a roux you can go with this so and what you do is we're adding a whole jar and you're adding a quarter with water so ready go right ahead that's gonna make some happy flavor right there and I'll pour that for you Holly a quarter of a jar Ooh. let me see that looks like right at a quarter and I'm gonna shake it up to get all that goodness back out of there yeah and we're gonna put that in okay. so the, I was doing a little research on this recipe and at this point they shake a little salt and pepper so while you're stirring I'm gonna add just a little salt and pepper because we're gonna taste it right at the end to see what we what we really need you know when you buy onions they don't come with salt and pepper on them so you got to add a little bit to them okay so we're gonna cook this down for about five minutes we're gonna let that cook down and then we're gonna add the potatoes into it and at that point we're going to cover it so let's bring that up to a ball we're going to let it simmer about five minutes we're going to dump the potatoes in it and it's really going to be good after that point so y'all hang on dreams come true of louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life-threatening illness Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information. DCTOF. LA.com. Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies night on Wednesdays. Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout, Come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Holly. The sauce patate's just about ready. You're fixing to try some. Yes. And we're starting with the crawfish and angel hair pasta where <laughs> we're going to start with the oil, the onions, the celery, and the bell pepper. And we're going with the red and yellow bell pepper on this one. Now, this is a pretty neat recipe I've been cooking for a while. I mean, and what makes this such a good recipe is the cream. It's the half and half that goes in it and the butter. We use unsalted butter and the half and half. So you can go right ahead and get us some cooking going on. Um, 
Th this this can be used in you can use shrimp in this you can use um, crab meat in this um, you don't have to use angel hair pasta if you like something else macaroni something like that you know it, it's fine to, it's fine to use now just like the other one the onions the celery and the bell pepper I like to put a little salt and pepper for my onions and celery and bell pepper when I put it in there because like I said they don't come with it I like the crab meat idea I'm with you on that. The crab meat is the way to go. Uh, just costs a little more. But yeah. these days, the crawfish tails is uh, pretty expensive also. Look like we're going to add your heat a little yeah, bit. Put I'll a little more heat on there. It Let's does see. seem low. Ah. There we go. Okay. Uh, have you made this before at home? Do you make I, a... I have not. Mm -mm. I have um, not. We started doing this... Well, I don't remember, shoot, it was probably 25 years ago and I went to help cater a job somewhere. I was helping doing something and the guy cooked it and I started watching it and after that I started cooking it because of, because of the richness that's in it. It's the, uh, it's the half and half and the butter that you just, yeah. you can eat a little bit, but a little while later you sure want to eat some more. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, I always have some food facts for you, and yeah, I and I've go. got some. I've yeah. got some food facts All right, for you. Go for it. Uh, the sandwich was created in 1762 <laughs> by John Montague, and he had a gambling problem, so he couldn't leave the card table. So he, they, that's when they invented the sandwich, so he could still play cards and eat at the same time. <laughs> the mother of invention, huh? Yeah. Here's, a, here's another one for you. Black pepper was so valuable, it was used as currency in the Middle Ages. Oh, my word. I'll, you know, I'll, uh, here's four pieces of black pepper, and uh, you give me some uh, malt liquor or something, and you're good to go, you know? <laughs> um, here's one for you, too. The American Fat Salvage Committee urged housewives to donate excess fat from cooking to the army in World War II. They were used to make explosives. And, and who knew fat was in your uh, nuclear bombs or whatever, oh you know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I can see why it would blow up. It's brown and pretty good in there. Yeah, you got some good sound going. Yeah. So going back to this, we're actually sauteing these down for about five to seven minutes. And what we're going to do is you're going to add the crawfish in there and the butter and then cook for about five minutes more and add the seasoning. It sounds like you need a couple more facts while you're cooking on that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this was a lot of seasoning. It is. It's a lot more than the uh, sauce potato seasoning. Mm -hmm. um, which, um, I, I, and you could add more to the mm -hmm. other one, you know. The, the seasoning, uh, and you that's what makes cooking really fun. If you want more onions, you put more than what the recipe calls for. If you like more bell pepper, you can, it's okay to do that. Mm -hmm. All right, a watermelon's weight is 92% water. Yeah. It, it makes me wonder what's the other 8%? Red watermelon pieces? <laughs> okay. Not everybody out there liked that one. There are more than 10,000 different varieties of tomatoes. That's a lot. That's a lot of tomatoes. And you can cure hiccups with a spoon of sugar. And, and I hear all kinds of things about hiccups, you know. But the spoon of sugar, I, it, it stimulates a part in your throat that stops you from thinking you have hiccups so that's what oh. that's what does it okay <laughs> i'll have to try it next time i hear drinking water upside down eating peanut butter uh, holding your breath holding your breath putting a bag in your mouth and yeah <laughs> all right y'all holly's getting this cooked down we're going to add some crawfish to it and we're going to taste that sauce be tot so y'all hang on the new, completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark, located at the Port Vincent Bridge, is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. 
Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans style pressed po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Corral fish season is coming soon. It's time to move into the 21st century with the new high-performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state-of-the-art technology, the 120-quart pots come to a boil in under 7 minutes and the return boil in under 2 minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, no more mushy crawfish using the old, outdated slow boilers. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories, like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you, a very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. Porsche's Sausage, located in French Settlement, is bringing back that old country smokehouse flavor and customer service. This third-generation family, dating back to 1946, has all your favorites. Hall cracklins, beef jerky, head cheese, and smoked sausage. Like the old days of Donald Porsche, our on-site butcher has all your specialties. Smoked tasso and hocks, andouille, Meat Sticks, and Uncle D's Bayou Blend. Come and experience Porsche's Sausage. It's a wonderful thing. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Holly. We got it looking good in there now. And we're ready for the next phase here, which is the butter. Okay. And the crawfish. And uh, Stick of butter. And the, I'm going to open this up for you. Look at there. I'm going to dump it for you as Go a matter ahead. of fact. All right. Oh, yeah. Now that's smelling good. So what you're doing now is you got the crawfish in there and the butter in there. So what you're doing is letting it cook about five minutes. Letting that crawfish cook down with that butter and the onions. And, and the next thing you're going to do is add the half and half which is 16 ounces of half and half which is half of this we already took half of it out and at that point you're going to taste it and at that point you're going to taste your salt and pepper and add the rest of the seasoning because we put half of it in there already and let it cook down just a little while and it and what we've done is the angel hair pasta we cooked on the side and we're going to dump that in there and you mix it together and the butter and the cream together is going to make you oh so happy. But what I did get you, Holly, is a plate of sauce patate where you All can right. try it. Alrighty, let me give it a Now, I, what I didn't say earlier, uh, some folks eat the sauce patate just like it is. Now, they didn't give you a spoon. Oh, you got a spoon. All right. I do have a spoon. I didn't even know you had one. But some folks would eat this without the rice <laughs> and I would have to say it's probably a little more healthy without the rice but here in Louisiana we like our rice all right let me try it give it a try give it a try sauce patate French settlement style but it's the quick version not from the roux it's the Uncle Larry's in there and and and, and if you like it hotter, you can put cayenne, it's okay. You could put a little more black pepper. And if you like it salty, you can put a little more salt in it, you know? This tastes perfect. I think the seasoning is like perfection. Is it? Mm -hmm. Is it good? Yeah. How could you put crawfish in? Now, I'm gonna tell you, it looks good. It looks good and it's got just exactly what you would like in a, in a stew. But the Uncle Larry done all the work for you making the stew. So like you were saying, when you got home from school and the kids are hungry and all you got to do is saute a couple items, dump it in there, let the potatoes right. cook. And the rough part is only 20 minutes of the potatoes right. cooking and there you have it. Yeah, it's really a good, a good um, choice for getting off of work and ha having to hurry up and cook. Now, She's got everything in here. 
we're fixing to start pouring the half and half in. Okay. And at that point, we'll add the angel hair pasta, which is already cooked. And then you'll get to eat some more food, Holly. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, hang on. We got good stuff coming. All right, we've got the cream in there. We put the rest of the seasoning in there. We let it come up to a slow ball. And, and when you put that cream in there, you don't want to ball the, the dog out of it. You just want a, a slow simmer. Mm -hmm. And at that point, once that simmers in, everything you need is in there now. So at this point, we're adding, and I'm going to do it for you. Okay. I'm going to put some in there, and you stir it as I go. Okay. The angel hair pasta. Okay. And Was that a whole package right there? That's a one pound pack of angel hair pasta. But you're not... You, and I'm putting you, it all. You're, you, you're going to want it all because okay. you're going to need some tomorrow. It's so good you're going to oh, need right. to eat some tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And I'm putting it. I'm going to let you go to town stirring all right. it. All right. All right. Here we go. How'd you like that sauce potato? It was very good. Very good. Uh, uh, and it's perfection. It's, yeah. It's something that uh, you, you don't think about. You know, it's, you, you get potatoes and then I wonder how I'm going to cook these potatoes. But... Um, the shortcut with Uncle Larry makes it uh, even more fun with it. Okay, so everything's in there. We're getting it all stirred in. And what I like to do at this point, once you get it all stirred, stir it all, we're going to put the lid on it and we're going to let it rest for a little while. And, and it'll soak up some of the seasoning. It'll soak up the noodles. It'll soak up all the ingredients in there. And it'll, uh, what they call it, melding, melting. I don't know what they call it, but I call it melding. Uh, <laughs> once it's all together in there, we're going to put the lid on it. We're going to let it sit, and we're going to come back, and we're going to taste it. And uh, Holly's going to be happy, happy, happy. Y'all hang on. All right, y'all. We got something really cool going on right here. This is collard greens, and not everybody eats collard greens, but uh, a lot of folks do, and it's ideal for the cornbread. And and you were tasting some cornbread because you're not a big collard green fan. Right. How, how'd you like that cornbread? The cornbread was excellent. Very good. Now, the Loved cornbread it. that we cooked here did not have the sugar. And you, you don't miss it. Right. It just is right. very good. And then we had a uh, Mexican cornbread. Mm, and it's very good. It's got the corn, the chilies. And that's Ancient. just about what changes it there. Mm -hmm. It's a little more dense. Cheese. And there's cheese in it also. Mm -hmm. But uh, you yeah. normally wouldn't eat that with your collard greens. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the collard greens. How to, how to deal with the collard greens. First you wash them. And what you're doing is taking these stems out of the middle. You don't really want these hard stems. So you're pulling the meat off the stem okay Whoop, wrong way so collards is a big staple in the south also uh, big in Mississippi where I hunt they wear some collard greens and mustard greens out up there but what you're doing at this point and you can get a whole handful of them what you do is roll it like a cigar and you're cutting it in ribbons and once you cut them up, and you're going to have long ribbons, so you cut them this way, and then you'll come back and make a couple cuts this way where you don't have giant collard greens. And, and at that point, you're ready to roll with them. But we made some collard greens to go on the cornbread, and it's really, really simple. I took four bunches of collard greens, six pigtails, one pound of cubed ham, a teaspoon of garlic, salt and pepper, and a little bit of lemon wedge. So all you're doing is pouring your collard greens. Well, you're going to take your pigtails first, put them in a heavy skillet, and you're going to cook them down a while. And you don't have to eat the pigtails. What that does, it renders the fat into there. And that's just a, um, a very unique flavor that's in there. And you're going to, at that point, once you render them down, about 20 minutes or so, render them down a little. You're going to add the collard greens in. You're going to add the ham in. You add all your ingredients except the lemon wedge because some people like to squeeze the lemon on it when it's done. Mm -hmm. And you're just cooking it down. Some folks like to cook it down to nothing. Other folks like to cook it down just a little, you know. But the, the ham is what you're eating. 
some folks will sit there and gnaw the pigtails and, and, and tear those up too. But uh, on, on the collard greens and on the, I, I've seen folks don't even need a fork. They'll go to town with them greens in there and putting that on the cornbread and it's, it's really, really good. Really good. What if I want to try the collards but I didn't like pigtails? Could I put some kind of other meat well, in it? Most recipes do not call for pigtails. What they're going to tell you is add three meaty ham hocks. So you can put the ham hocks in there, cook them down a little bit, and you don't have to go as long on them because they're already smoked. And you use the same recipe with the hocks. Um, the pigtails, as a matter of fact, is from, that I did a little research on, the old Italians, when they cooked the spaghetti, they would have one pigtail in there. And you know who got that? Daddy. Mm -hmm. The kids didn't even know anything about the pigtail, but daddy ate the pigtail and that was part of the old Italian heritage in there, but they knew what was good back then. And something else we have for y'all, really, really cool, is I got my aunt to make us a broccoli salad. Now you were telling me you've done that before. Um, I've tasted it. Okay. I haven't actually made it, but I've tasted it before and it's excellent. Now, you're going to use three small stalks of broccoli, one large red onion chop, six one ounce boxes of raisins, one three ounce bag of bacon bits, and three cups of pecan pieces, but you don't have to have the pecan pieces in there. And then there's the dressing. It's a cup of mayo, a half a cup of red wine vinegar, and a third a cup of sugar. And you mix that all over and just pour it in there. And like most things, sitting in the refrigerator for a little while, it's gonna taste a little bit better. So another fine salad by my aunt. She, yeah. she can cook, she's a good cook. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we done cooked some stuff tonight. I know, wow. Did you, uh, did you get one of those screwdrivers yet? Uh, no. You had some orange juice. I know what you had. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, we had fun. I'm glad y'all was here. And I want to thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking. And we'll see you next week. Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information, dctofla.com.